Hello and welcome to another week in our garden. It's a good afternoon and it's it's a nice day, a bit breezy and we're going to start on the tomatoes because uh, we've had several warnings of blight this year but we've always seemed to have got through but the last one I'm afraid we got blight on the tomatoes. Now luckily we had already cut the tops off the potatoes we did that last week but unfortunately that footage is on the old computer that broke so it's, we've lost that footage but I will show you the potatoes all trimmed off in a few moments we'll get on with this blight first now I've taken out most of the tomatoes that got the blight and I left this one so I could show you so everybody knows what to look for when there's there's blight about now the first thing you'll see on the tomato plant is the brown patches appearing on the leaves and then on the back there'll be a yellowy spotty sort of fungus I don't know if you can see that very well just there just a moment there you are there's light fine yellow dots and then the fungus is spreading once you've actually got it on the leaves that means it will be in the whole tomato so it will slowly spread through and although I say slowly it goes through quite quick first thing you'll see is this browning from the top of the fruit which slowly works its way to the bottom now that fruit will very quickly go rotten these that don't look like they've got it I'm afraid they will have it because it's in the sap you'll finish up like that that's totally blighted look you can see it's it's nearly rotten another one over here it tends to take the end tomatoes and then work its way back but normally when you see that you know your tomatoes have had it these you could try and ripen these but I think you'll find that as they ripen they will start to turn black patches on them and then they've had it these look look very nice but look at this one look it's there it's in the sap the best thing to do if you get this blight is to take them up and burn them which is what I've actually been doing but I needed to leave this one just to show you the other tomatoes that we've got left are crimson crush mountain magic and cocktail crush these seem up to now to be blight resistant and I can't see any blight on them at all so I think this is the one to grow outdoors from now on. Now we do have uh, quite a few Roma, the, the pear shaped ones, for what we use for cooking. They're not really blight resistant so I'm there every day watching those and just hope we can avoid it on those. If it does get on those they'll have to go. Now we'll stop a moment while I remove this tomato and get my hands washed. Now I've disposed of that tomato I'm going to have a fire this afternoon so I can get rid of it and get it burnt and away. Now as I said before the footage that we lost when the computer broke was actually of me cutting the tops off these potatoes now this happened a week ago so we've another week with them in the ground so it hardened the skin what I actually did was I dug one root of each variety of potato and I was very very pleased with the size of them so we decided to cut the tops off and get them out of the ground 
very little slug damage so I was quite happy with that and luckily we got them away and they've nearly been burned that nearly blew me away I've nearly burnt them but the beauty of it was we just missed the blight and we've had several blight warnings but we've always seemed to have got away with it but that last one it took those tomatoes out uh, we had a blight warning in the morning the next day it was on that's how quick you will get the blight once you've had your warning so all the potatoes will leave till next week and then we'll start lifting them there's some very good ones Ian these rows are yours I have dug some of yours Ian they're absolutely brilliant thanks ever so a lot mate now while we're here <laughs> believe it or not the sun's coming out now uh, we'll just have a look how the pumpkins are getting on and the squashes and then we'll have a look at that flint corn and a little bit of corn at the back that might be all right we'll have a look in a moment now also on that footage was lost was me taking the tops off the pumpkins to let them mature and they are doing the they're yellowing up beautifully now this one the top broken off when we was moving it to put it off the ground but that'll be fine if we leave it alone it'll be all right now you can still see the circle that there was grown in and how they've all fruited right round the circle the smaller ones are grown for culinary use the bigger ones for the granddaughters and diane for halloween i also took quite a few leaves off the squashes and i showed you the ones that were split so i'll show you again now can you see look it's split i think that's due to the weather and there's one more over there i'll show you that they've done very well but there's just one or two that have split wide open now this side you can see it more with the leaves off and it's letting the light and what bit of sunshine we're getting onto these squashes and they are actually turning turning color they'll turn to like a khaki color like this and then the stems will go brown and then they're ready for harvest now as you know Gemma's a florist and she does weddings etc and it was Gemma's idea for us to grow the flint corn so she could use the cobs for decorating at weddings etc but with covid that's all gone down so now i'm stuck or we are stuck with the cob so we'll lift a few and diane will use a few as decorations and i'm sure Gemma will in her house as well we'll just break one off and see how they're progressing they've not made big but we'll see there's perhaps there's still a bit of growing left in some of them let's have a look what we've got i'll put this on the floor but i can show you i will pick it up i've never actually grown this before this is a new one to me <laughs> and the granddaughter said they wanted it for popcorn but i don't think there's much in this one but we'll have a look it won't hurt to have a look a lot of greenery on it let's take that off well they're colorful if i just pull that back for now and just show you they're very colorful so then they're not quite ready look remember these are flint for a re they're called flint for a reason because they're very very hard there's some pretty 
pretty colours there. So, well, I don't think they're quite ready yet, look. But we'll leave them for another week or so. We'll get them before the frost anyway. And that's... Tough. I've never grown them before and I think they're quite pretty actually. But I don't think I'll grow them again. Now we have one or two at the back here that are normal sweet corn or yellow sweet corn and we'll just see how they've progressed as well the, the cobs are a lot bigger so let's have a look while we're here and see what's in those i think they've cross pollinated a little bit <laughs> they have look that's nowhere near ready yet although i don't think that probably will be ready but you can see these colors that's because they've been grown next to the the flint ones and they've actually cross pollinated a bit but let's see yes there there's a milky substance coming out so they're not far off ready this one won't be wasted because i'll give it to the chickens but the flint one i'll not give them that because they'll never be able to peck it although we'll probably not be sending the the flint cobs to Gemma and we'll just take a few for decoration. The actual stems make fantastic compost if you put them through the shredder and they chop them up beautiful. So all is not wasted on the flints. Now I've also been asked how those uh, peanuts are doing. So we'll go down to the greenhouse and have a look how, how they're progressing. Here are the peanuts. And now Gemma gave me a white strawberry plant in a pot. And I popped it in here just for safekeeping. The pot is actually rooted down and all these runners have come out of it so i'll have to sort that out later on but in the meantime there's the peanuts uh, as you can see they're they're still with us they're not we'll wait till october and see what's happening with them i'd like to have a look but we may as well wait and do it properly as you can see this side the lettuce is started to to blow a bit now and there's an insect or two eating them I would suspect they're caterpillars that's got in there up into the bottom greenhouse and show you what's left of the pepper now the the bulls on ones they are beginning to colour up now the reds are also colouring up it seems that the yellows were a little bit in front of the reds for turning just one or two of the yellow ones left now uh, and we'll have those before they get overripe this this one bull's horn is just beginning to turn as well so we've still got a way to go and the aubergines we've harvested quite well with aubergines but what i did i cut the plant back and kept it growing. I don't think it will do much now but rather than throw it away I decided to keep it. Now looking out I see the plum tree and just needs a little bit of topping off at the top. There's one or two branches that I don't want that high up and we have a few days of dry weather over the weekend so I'm going to fetch the long pruner and take those off while I can. Now this is the plum tree. It's had a terrible year this year. And there's still a little bit of fruit left on it that have actually ripened since we did the picking. We've decided we're going to leave those for the birds and the insects. But in the meantime, all this across the top that's sticking out i need to remove i am a little late doing this i like to get it done oh three or four weeks ago 
but the weather has been so damp and remember you mustn't prune stone fruit when you've had some rain because that's when you get the silver leaf we are coming up to what I believe four days of dry weather so I'm going to just trim that top off today not a lot just enough to get those long spurs off I used the long handle pruner and we'll, we're going to take them right down to here look and we just let them drop just go around and just take them off and then what I should also do is later in the year I shall give this a good mulching so that when it comes to spring it's got the mulch on there We don't want plums right up there we'll never part this thing. I'll finish the tree off and then I'll show you it complete. Now that's the the little old plum tree prune. The one or two branches are still in it but this wind will soon blow them out. And we've got a nice dry spell now for those cuts to heal over and keep out the silver leaf now when a plot comes empty like this one what i like to do is just fork it over not doing any preparation just yet but i like to fork it over and take out any of the perennial weeds that are in there i've done this plot here this is where the garlic was we grew lettuce in there we grew rocket in there so now it's empty, I've just forked it over. As you can see, it looks quite good to be forked over. And I don't know if you can see from here, the apples. As you can see, the apples are nearly ready. Not quite yet, they still need another week or so, but they really are looking nice. And there's quite a harvest there to take. That's in the next week or so maybe two weeks maximum and then we'll need to summer prune this this tree back a little lovely crop of apples another little job i've been doing is i've been working the strawberry beds now i've taken the runners off which is a continuous job while they're still growing you have to be uh, about once a week to take the runners off and I've also forked only lightly though between the rows ground between the rows gets very very hard so I like to just loosen it this time of year and then when it comes to spring we'll put our own compost between them and under them the strawberries we don't use manure because if it's raining and it splashes up onto the fruit first thing I do is all these leaves that are a bit big I just take off just take the odd ones out I don't I don't cut the whole lot I just take the taller ones off just put them there so it looks like that lot you see we're just taking the top leaves off I did that about a fortnight ago now and you can see the new leaves are already coming through. Here we are. Can you see where these these old leaves now the they're taking the, the green out of them so it's best just to take them off. You can do it with a knife or you can do it with with the shears if you want just chop them back keep your eye out for runners take those off as you go there you are look just take that one off as well now if you don't want to use the runners it's best to take them off we're not producing any young strawberry plants this year so I am taking all the runners off Another one here, look. 
just take them off. The strawberries in these two rows are the early strawberries. So I'm not going to disturb the top leaves at all because I want them to grow up. They didn't, they didn't bulk up very well this year so we'll leave those alone and as I say we'll mulch them in the spring, they'll be fine. These perennial weeds, look, we'll take those out while we're here. There you go. A bit of grass, take all that. And then I just fork down lightly between the rows, don't go too deep. Just, just loosening more than anything. The runner there, look, they've missed. This grass. It's a bit hard just there where we've been walking, so I just lose it. And so it's very hard so I'll just loosen it a bit from underneath and then just break the top and the strawberries are very very shallow rooted so we don't want to go too deep all the time the strawberries but as I say this is really compact so we'll just loosen it That'll let the moisture and the air get in. Then just loosen the top. No fertilizers this time of year, remember, for the strawberries. We'll do all the fertilizing and the mulching in the spring. That's all I really need to do for the strawberries. Now the raspberries, and these late raspberries are still managing to throw plenty of fruit and if it's going to be dry over the next day or so they'll be even more ready there's still lots still to come if you look below we actually pick the strawberries every two days yesterday we had quite a, a pudding bowl full if you like and tomorrow we'll pick again but as you can see this there's plenty coming if you have a a nice dry day it's amazing how quick they'll they'll redden up now with quite a bit of harvesting to do over the next week or so but i wanted to also start where we're doing preparation work every week because we've got all this garden to pre as it comes available we need to prepare it for different crops so the next thing we do is in the evening or probably if we, if we ever get a wet day in the next few days we need to think where we're actually going to move some of the crops in the rotation so we can prepare the ground especially for those crops now that's an ongoing thing, we'll do that. We'll probably do it in the shed with you one day, we'll move everything around. Use the whiteboard, then it's easier to rub out when I make mistakes. Now that'll be it for this week. Many, many thanks for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. And do be careful everybody. The virus is still with us. Let's all get through it and get on with next year's crops. Take care, stay safe, bye now.